everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to your studio and today I'm sharing with you days 26, 27, and 28 of the Artist Trading Card A Day Challenge in the month of June 2018 called Hashtag ATC A Day or ATC AD 2018. You can also search Hashtag ATC 2017 to see last year's Artist Trading Cards if you want to. That would give you almost 60 days worth of artist trading cards if you searched both of those hashtags. Um, lots and lots and lots of people participating in both years and so there's lots of fun artist trading cards to look at. So for this video all three of these cards are on vinyl ATCs from the Etsy shop by Shannon Green and she takes billboards, vinyl billboards, and makes them into things to recycle them. And one of the things are these three and a half by two and a half inch cards. And you can buy them in her Etsy shop. I'll put a link in the description box below along with all the other materials that I'm using. And so since I'm new to this vinyl, I'm just trying a lot of different products on it. Um, this one has been gessoed with heavy gesso and then I'm using Dr. P.H. Martin's India inks to play around with it. So I started with the purple and the magenta um, inks and some white and kind of dripped them and, and then sprayed them with water to get them to run uh, to, to color the background of the card. And then I have this new stencil. I joined Stencil Club from Stencil Girl and when you're in the Stencil Club you get um, exclusive stencils each month sent to you as well as um, materials and videos from the people who designed them. It's kind of a fun thing. It's like a monthly, you know, you can join, you can leave whenever you want. You just stop paying, I guess, when you're done. Um, so this one is for the month of June and I can't tell you what the name of it is or he, even who the designer is because I don't have that information in front of me, but it's, it, there's a 9x12, a 6x6, and a 4x4, and the 9x12 has a lot of different floral motifs on it. So I decided to use one of those on my card using some golden light molding paste, which is kind of a fluffy acrylic medium. It dries quickly, and that's the reason that I prefer it over some of the other molding or modeling pastes. And so I put that on there with a spatula through the stencil, and then I dried that. And then now I'm using one of my acrylic handle brushes from uh, um, uh, Royal and Langnickel. I like the acrylic handles because I tend to leave my brushes soaking in water and the wooden handles swell up from the water and then the paint peels off and they just look ugly. These acrylic handle ones uh, that's golden Taclon, they're not expensive. Um, I got them off of Amazon and I can leave a link for you below. Um, but they have a nice bristle for what I do with them and they don't get damaged when you leave them soaking in water overnight on accident because you forgot to rinse them. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one who does that, okay? It's not just me. I know there's a lot of people out there that do the same thing. So that's why I like the acrylic candles. So I'm using the light red and the yellow and the light green and dark green and a little bit of brown to just paint over that white modeling paste and because it's so raised I think to myself I want to add some darker color so that it goes down into the crevices of that raised area and makes it more dramatic so I decided to use this turquoise color um, Probably could have just went with the purple because purple was really dark, wasn't it? But I didn't. I went with turquoise over the top. And I let it run and then I sprayed it to give it, you know, to encourage it to run more. And I should have just left it right then. But then I put some more on there trying to get a real dark uh, um, bit through the middle for drama. And at this point, the, the India ink decides to kind of seep under the modeling paste and kind of soak into it. So I decided I better brighten it back up again with some more <laughs> uh, light red and yellow to try to bring that bright flower back. And so um, 
that works pretty well, but then I get another idea when I'm doing that, and that is to use uh, gilding paste. It's like a waxy, um, mica-soaked stuff. They're, the brand I have is Inca Gold, but there's lots of, of uh, brands out there. And because the thing is raised, I can just take my finger and go over the top of everything that's raised very easily and make it a little bit shimmery. So I thought that was pretty fun, but then I still wanted it to be a little bit more orange. <laughs> that darn flower stops being orange constantly. So I uh, go back over it again with the light red and the yellow to orange it up a little bit more. So it's still shimmery. That does, The India ink is not 100% opaque, so it's translucent enough that the shimmer comes through. And I was finally happy with that. I decided to go around the edges of the card with a little bit of the um, Inca Gold as well. And just make it more shimmery. And it kind of, after I'd done the splatters and the shimmer, it reminded me of a night sky. So it reminded me of flowers blooming in the night. Um, lots of flowers do that. They just bloom in night. So... I went around the edges with a black memento pad just to give a border because I like borders. <laughs> they make me happy. And then all I had left to do was add some words, which I did with my brother P-Touch label maker. This is a real old model, but tapes still come, and I finally bought some new tape for it. So um, I can print things out now. And I think the words I said were beauty blooms at night or something like that and put those on and day 26 is done. I guess I probably went around the words with some black or something. Messily, I'm sure. I can't seem to make a straight line these days <laughs> to save my life. No straight lines. So there you have it, day 26. Yep, look at those terribly unstraight lines. Oh well, that's life. So for day 27, I still have one more uh, gessoed vinyl ATC from By Shannon Green's Etsy shop. And so I decide to play with uh, alcohol ink and, on it and see what it does because that's what I'm doing is experimenting with different products on these vinyl ATCs. Um, I have a couple journal covers that I'm planning on decorating very soon, and I just want to see what you can do on the vinyl. Um, the alcohol ink does not bloom like it would on a smooth surface. These vinyl, this fused vinyl does have almost like a canvas texture to it. It's, it's uh, a little bit bumpy and weavy. Yeah, weavy, I said it. <laughs> That makes no sense, does it? I know. Um, but it still looks cool. And I I put on some oregano, some red pepper, and some butterscotch. And then some blending solution. Dry that. And then go back over it with some lemonade and some lettuce. Which are a little bit lighter tones of those same colors. And I, I think it looks neat. I like it. So the only thing that I did notice was it's going to need to be sealed. Because it's still kind of sticky. Um, the resin in alcohol ink can be sticky if it doesn't dry and I'm not sure that it that the vinyl is absorbent enough to make it dry so I decided to put I decided what can I do what am I gonna do so I, I had some pastel ground which is a product that is for adding tooth to a surface so that you can use pastels on it and I decided to put that over the top of it just to seal it in and I dried it and then I decided to use pastels over it. So these are pastel pencils. They're like a chalk pencil from Derwent. And I decided because the first color that I used or maybe the second color I used was oregano and I think that's just a really fun word to say oregano, oregano, oregano. It's fun. <laughs> um, I decided to draw an oregano plant on there. It's also tasty very tasty. I like oregano and basil and all those yummy Italian herbs that you might get in Italian food. Yum. I'm hungry. <laughs> now I want to go eat Italian food. So 
I'm using, I started out with the white pencil to draw in my image because the background is pretty dark and I wasn't sure I'd be able to see what I was doing. And then I start with a li the lightest green that comes in the set and start coloring in and adding green to the plant. And then I go to some yellow because I figure it's in the sunshine and it's got, you know, dappled, dappled yellow on the leaves because the sun is shining. And so I better add in some warm yellow tone. Then I go with, um, I think a darker green. I can't remember what was next. This is probably a medium tone green maybe because I know there is a darker one coming. Maybe even a couple more darker ones. But I just keep, you know, going in, adding some color. The thing about pastels is they're fairly opaque over each other. So here I'm going back in with the white and adding a highlight to make the leaves look more dimensional and to kind of combat that I have right white around everything look, which is what I was getting was because I drew it in, in white, then it seemed like there was a white line around everything. So by bringing the white into the center as well and adding a highlight, it started to take away from that. But the one thing that I didn't really enjoy was that the background was still too crazy and I wasn't having much luck seeing the plant stand out from the background. So I decided to take a very dark green um, a pastel pencil and just go around the outside of the plant and color in the background a little bit. And that made a big difference in uh, being able to see the plant standing out from the background because the pastel is quite opaque. Then I got out an olive colored uh, ink pad, which is unstuck. So I had to re-stick it <laughs> to its plastic case. But um, once I did, then I just carefully went around the edges of the card with this olive color, which is a dark green um, permanent ink. And then just I just kept messing with it a little bit more until I was happy with my drawing. Oregano has kind of a rounded leaf that kind of folds over in the middle a little bit. Then I sealed it with my soft rubber brayer and some matte medium in the fluid format. Um, it smeared slightly, but not too much. So I, I had my Spectra fix out and I was trying to spray it. But once again, the nozzle is clogged and I didn't feel like going and getting the nozzle unclogged. So I just went over it with matte medium instead. So there you have it. That's my um, oregano ATC from day 27 on vinyl from Shannon Green. So now here is a raw one. This one doesn't have any uh, gesso on it. I didn't gesso it. I just decided to collage over the top of it and see how that would go. So I'm going through my bin of unsorted scraps, which I've been trying to use up, but I was kind of laughing. I saw someone else post something about using their scraps and just creating more scraps because you use a little bit of it but then you don't use it all up and then the, the little smaller piece goes back in the, the basket. So really nothing is ever getting used up. <laughs> and I agree with her. I think that's exactly what's happening. I don't feel like I made a dent in that thing at all. I really don't. I need to just go through and sort it all out and uh, put it in the color boxes. So I decided to use the last dregs of my poor Liquitex matte gel medium jar. I mean, it it's the last bit. So I just took a plastic palette knife and scraped like you would in a peanut butter jar to get the last little bit of peanut butter out. And I just used what was on that knife to do a very random collage using these um, browns, blacks, grays, and greens that I picked out of the um, scraps basket. There is a napkin, a piece of a napkin that's already been used a few times and has pieces torn off it, but it's still good because the rest of it's still there. Um, there's book text, there's some uh, pictures from a dictionary, there's some stenciled Yupo paper and, and sprayed cardstock, just 
little bits, bits of stuff. And I just covered the complete um, ATC with all those bits and gave it a really good dry. Pressing it down with a baby wipe at the beginning so that I can make sure that everything's pressed down. The, there is one piece of kind of a heavier cardstock weight that didn't want to lay down, so I had to press it. Then I dried it, trimmed it, and then going around the outside edges with the Memento Black Pad again to, you know, frame it in. I gotta frame things in. Then I took my Stabilo All Pencil, the nub that I have. <laughs> it's so tiny. It's getting smaller and smaller every time I have to sharpen the thing. And I drew a tree. Trees calm me down. They make me happy. I really like trees. Um, we don't have a lot of, of deciduous trees here in the southern part of Arizona, except for mesquites and palo verdes. But I can drive four hours to the north and see lots of big pine trees and oak trees and, you know, things. It's, it's not far. So I really enjoy trees. I just, they're just one of my favorite things. They're one of my favorite things to draw to. So I drew my true, my, <laughs> truly, I drew <laughs> my tree onto my um, collage background. And I'm like, huh, now what am I going to do? I have a tree. And I decide to do some negative painting or exclusion of the background instead of painting the foreground of the tree using quinacridone gold. This is such a bizarre color, quinacridone gold. It's kind of orange, kind of brown, kind of gold. I don't know, but it just, it can do some amazing stuff. If you, if you ever want a new color that you haven't tried that, you know, you wonder about, this is the one to go for. It's, it's a, really cool color. I don't know. It's, I don't know what it is about it, but I filled in all the background with quinacridone gold. And then the tree, of course, comes forward and says, here I am. I'm a tree. I decide my tree needs some foliage because it's not winter. So I tear up some more of that napkin and just, because the napkin's translucent, I can just kind of put it over my drawing and you can still see the branches coming through but it also looks like there's foliage on there so I was pretty happy with how that came out and the last thing I did was I added some words I have these scraps of paper that are from the gypsy moments pad from canvas corp brands seven gypsies that just have a bunch of words and I was looking at the ones that were kind of a green olive green color and trying to pick out some of those to make some sort of a sentence or saying, which is kind of like found poetry, sort of. Um, and I just put some words on there, and I was done with that one. If you enjoyed this video, this series of videos, um, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share if you want to. Um, go and search the hashtag ATCAD2018 and ATCAD2017 to see all sorts of people doing all sorts of artist trading cards. They're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're on YouTube, they're everywhere. So it's a lot of fun to look at them and, and check out what people have done, see how creative people can be when they're doing a artist trading card every day for 30 days. This one only has two days left, just 29 and 30, and then this challenge will be complete. So those will be coming up um, at the beginning part of July because June's over. <laughs> and I think that that is it for me. I, I don't have anything else to say. I'm just putting some words on, and here comes your close-ups. Thanks. Bye-bye.